Hello. We continue our coverage of the match between Botvinnik and Smyslov of 1954. And today we'll take a look at the game number 7 of the match, which was the next uh, decisive game since games number 5 and 6 ended in a draw. As you could remember, the first three decisive games were all won by Botvinnik, who was leading by three points at this point of the match. And finally, Smyslov managed to take revenge. They have continued their arguments in the uh, French defense once again, knight to c3, bishop to b4. And here, as you remember, last time Botvinnik went e5, when the rising position became rather sharp very soon, shortly after. And here, he instead decided to stick with a slightly rare f-bit approach, namely pawn to a3. After bishop c3, bc3, d4, this is considered to be more or less forced. White goes queen to g4, and after knight to f6, because otherwise white will just pick the pawn on e4 or the pawn on g7, knight to f6, queen to g7, rook to g8, queen to h6, we get the following position, which is, as we have figured out, which arises more or less by force. Black went pawn to c5. It's a very typical position of this line. White has a bishop pair, and if he would manage to open up the game very fast, mobilize his forces, and for instance open up the position with such a move as f3, he'll be able to count on a rather strong initiative. But at the moment it's black who has uh, the better development, and also white pawns on the queen side tend to be slightly weak at the moment, so black tries to benefit from that immediately. Knight to e2 was played, rook to g6, defining the position of the white queen, where would it go? Uh, there is a move, uh, queen to e3, which is played in the actual game. Queen to d2 was instead tested in two more games of this match, and we'll take a look at this later. There was also a move queen to h4, used in another game between Romanovsky and Botvinnik, played 15 years before this match, and it was proven that white doesn't really achieve much here. So queen to e3. Now knight to c6 was played. And it's quite an interesting uh, position. I would like to ask you how did white continue, what do you think? If you were willing to just take a look yourself without any hints, I gave you that chance. And now I'd like to explain the uh, motives of white's uh, next move, because it doesn't really seem logical whatsoever. The point is that the pawn on d4 is hanging, and this knight on e2 cannot really go anywhere. At the same time on e2 it hinders white's development. So it's necessary to somehow resolve this issue, which is why white took dc5. Doesn't look logical, now white gets three, uh, well, tripled pawns on the c-file. At the same time, when you have the bishop pair, you don't really mind opening up the position. Instead, you're looking forward to doing so. And here, black went knight to g4. The right move would have been instead queen to a5, as Botvinnik himself writes in the uh, book on the match. And now after knight to g4, White simply captured the pawn. And now the point is that, well, how simply? Relatively simply. Uh, because White needed to calculate a little bit, of course. And uh, I'd like you to ask, how did Black continue? There is a nice, spectacular move, which was, of course, the point of knight to g4. Indeed, Black continued with queen to d1. I think that that's quite a frequent pattern, which, however, always causes some uh, surprise uh, of people who never saw it before. So, king to d1, knight f2, king to e1, knight to e4. And uh, as we see, white loses the right to castle. At the same time, after knight to f4, uh, the, the rising position isn't that attractive for black whatsoever, because as he'll start capturing white pawns, the bishops will spring to life. At the moment, the uh, number of pawns, well, white has an extra pawn, and black would perhaps capture one of these two. But once again, the bishop would just be able to go either to b2, or maybe after e4 to a3, if that pawn on c5 disappears, or maybe to e3, the other bishop goes to g2. So, uh, in my opinion, black's position at this point is clearly inferior. Black went rook to g8, bishop to d3, knight takes c5, and white just greedy the captured on h7. Uh, black went rook to h8. What would have happened though if rook to g7? Please feel free to pause the video and try to find this. 
Indeed, there is a lovely solution for white who just wins instantly, I believe, by such a move as knight to h5. The point is that if rook h7, then there is knight to f6. And otherwise, the rook doesn't really have that many squares to go to. If rook to g4, there is knight f6. And if rook takes g2, then I think white can simply go king to f1. And now the rook doesn't have any files or any squares over the second rank. And once again, it's just getting trapped on the g file as well, which in my opinion is a rather cute solution. So black went rook to h8, bishop to d3. And here black came up with a rather strong, uh, a rather st good decision. How should black continue? Find the precise move or, well, better come up with some ideas on this position. Black realized that white's main boon in this situation is the advantage of two bishops, so he just gets rid of one of them with knight takes d3. The only issue, the reason why I could get initiated regarding that is that after cd3, the white pawn structure gets fixed, but at the same time, once again, the uh, light squared bishop was more crucial in the situation rather than just weak pawns. Bishop to d7. Um, and here Botvinnik writes a pretty interesting uh, thing. He was He spent an incredible amount of time on this move, because he was not able to find the defense in the following line. White castles, black castles long, white went knight to h, white goes knight to h3, attacks the pawn on f7, and then after f5, for example, goes d4, and then the knight comes back, comes back to f4. And he couldn't really find any, any convenient defense to that. He spent quite a lot of time, and only uh, after very long considerations he had realized that the whole variation is simply not possible because the white king had already moved. Which, in my opinion, is quite, quite a curious uh, situation to find yourself in. That was obviously just caused by uh, this extreme fatigue that players experience during the World Championship match. So, black finally went bishop d7, bishop e3, and castle blown. White just went king to f2, e5, knight to e2, uh, bishop to g4, h3, bishop to h5. Uh, as we see that as we see here, white has an extra pawn, but it's obviously by no means easy to actually convert it. For example, if g4, bishop g6, this pawn on d3 starts hanging, so d4, and now let's say f5. Black gets an excellent position and a lot of counterplay. Uh, according to his style and uh, being faithful to his reputation of a very technical player, Smith Love uses the following idea. He doesn't really want, he denies any uh, possible ambitions related with this extra pawn. At the same time, he gets a um, stable positional advantage. He went d4 here. A very strong move. The point being, after bishop e2, king e2, e d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, white just went king to f2. And now, the point is that there is no extra pawn anymore, but the whole board is open, the bishop is way better than the knight, and there is quite a lot of files, open files for the rook. rooks. Uh, one of them can go to c1, perhaps the other one could end up on, b, on b1 or d1, or white can try to double up, trade rooks, and then just activate his king very fast, come to the center. So black's defense here, of course, is not easy. Uh, king to f2, black went b6, rook h to d1. Knight to e6. I think that black should have instead gone for something like knight to b3 in such a situation when after, for instance, rook to b1, rook to d1, rook to d1, he would just swap all the rooks. And if white does swap, well, I think, of course, black is clearly worse, but the uh, main point of his defense is that at some point, especially if the bishop doesn't uh, remain on this diagonal, he can try to play b5, a5, b4, trade maybe this pawn for two pawns of his own on the Queen side, just get his king somewhere to g6 or to g8 and hold, because on one wing it would be barely possible for white to convert the pawn. Of course white has other possibilities as well, for instance here he could try not to trade and say go rook to b1 instead, but black would still remain fair chances to hold. Uh, instead knight e6 was played, rook to c1, king to b7, rook takes, rook takes, and now the problem is that the h pawn becomes incredibly powerful and just distracts all the black forces. h4. Rook to h8 and now g3. 
Of course, Black tried to get some counter chances on the queen side with, by means of b5, king to f3, and now a5. Just king to e4 was played, rook to e8. My apologies, rook to e8 instead. Um, and the problem is that here, of course, king f5 is not possible. Well, I mean, it's possible, it just doesn't look to anything good after knight to g7 check. The bishop's hand, and if you go here, there's an idea knight h5, knight g3. So it doesn't really work. And probably white was initially relying on the idea of g4, but then after something like check, followed by knight c6 and then b4, black would be in time to get reasonable chances to hold this position. So white just returned. It's very important at some point to be able to admit your mistake or inaccuracy and just to uh, get back to the previous position and try to correct your mistakes. <laughs> Rook to c3. Defending the bishop in advance, intending king e4, king e4, king f5, king f6, for example. So black went f5, now rook to d3. Um, now the black king manages to get into the game after king to c6. Bishop to d2, rook to a8, black doesn't, of course, give up his pawn. Bishop c3, king to c5, bishop to f6, b4, h5. Um, Why is on the chances, of course, to bet all of his money on the h pawn, uh, which is supported by the powerful bishop over the long diagonal. And here Black found with one more precise decision, he went, how did he continue? Rook to a7, the rook is placed perfectly on the 7th rank, it prevents the h pawn from advancing any further, and supports the uh, black's pawn on the queen side. Rook to e3, king to d6, and now check. That's a tricky check. Uh, the point being that it, it could seem that black wants to get his king to the king side to help fight with the h pawn, but the problem is after king, e, king to e7, g4, the white king manages to break through, and after, for instance, taking, taking, the black rook doesn't control the 7th rank anymore, there is also some pin, the king gets to f5, so the position is by no means good. So black stayed alert, he went king to d5, now bishop to b2, king to d6, check. King to c5, uh, once again not going to e7 because of the same reason. The uh, white king would be able to get some room and to go to g4. Rook to d2, rook to h7, rook to h2, king to d6. And here Smyslov tried an idea to play a4. Now, however, black finally went wrong. I think that he could have simply drawn this game, well, relatively simply, of course, we cannot say that without sitting over the board ourselves, he should have gone king to d5, intending just king c4, king b3, king a4. I guess he was afraid of the ideas related with g4, but black's in time to cope with both white pawn on a4, as well as the h pastor, he could even give the knight for that pawn if he eliminates both, and he would reach a draw pretty easily. So here, after a4, black made a mistake, he went king e7. Finally, voluntarily go into the 7th rank, now he just loses g4. The point is that after taking, taking, for example, king to d6, king to f5, if now knight g7, then just bishop g7, rook g7, and h6. And the black king is, of course, very passive in such a situation, black should lose. So here, after g4, black tried f4, but now just rook to d2. And since there is no defense to rook to d5, Black had seemed to resign the game here. This was the first loss by Mikhail Botvinnik in this match, which finally led to uh, the very sharp match situation in the future. I hope you have liked the game. Please let me know in the comments what you think, uh, whether you have learned from this video, if you'd like me to continue this topic or start some new ones. And thanks for watching my channel and supporting it. It was Yuri Kriklan.